I hope you said it. Uh, a new fellow from the international uh, international youth think tank is going to talk to you about AI and democracy. And you must. The international youth think tank is a vibrant transnational democracy. My name is Matas. I'm a youth fellow of the international youth think tank, or in short, the IYTT. And I'm here to talk to you about AI, but I'm also here to talk to you about democracy. When we think about AI, we also think about the future, about what's ahead. But what I also want to do for education is to make you think about the past, at least in theoretical terms. What you can see on the picture is the Agora and Nation Creek building. It's often referred to as the birthplace of democracy. One of the first places where citizens gathered to talk about their ideas, perceptions, and demands on how to create an inclusive government system that's actually beneficial for citizens. And throughout the presentation, what I want to do is sort of to throw AI into the agora, because as we've heard today in the open speech, there's a demand to create a human-centric approach towards AI. And we, as I want to see, have developed several methods to gather citizen-centric data which could help in that process. Now I'll talk a bit about the origins of democracy, but what's the status quo? As you can see, globally speaking, autocracies outnumber democracies. And furthermore, on the graph on the left, you can see that in recent years, there has been a sharp decline of electoral democracies in favor of electoral autocracies. So within this global negative view of democracy, the IYPT has been founded as a way to create democracy strengthening policy proposals. The IYPT can be best reflected by its diverse membership of its youth fellows. However, we are by no means only compared with youth interests, but with issues that are of societal relevance at large, such as democracy or the current artificial intelligence transformation that we witness globally. And together, we organize different uh, events and policy proposing um, outputs around these uh, key areas, such as innovation, arts, and policy making. And in our few years of existence, albeit since 2019, we've already partnered up with uh, global leading institutions in the realm of democracy, namely the Global Democracy Coalition, the Innovations and Policy Institute, International Idea, or the Athens Democracy Forum, where we have for the past two years, and right now, here this week, Youth fellows presenting some of our ideas and outputs to global leaders, including uh, the EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen or the former UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon. And within the past years, we've actually exponentially increased our international outreach. We organize annual youth conferences, and the number of applicants has increased, not just in terms of applicants, but also in terms of the diversity where they are coming from. And that's going to be important in a second. Our IYTT working cycle reflects our innovative, citizen-centric, um, but also circular thinking approach. As I said, every year we gather annual youth conferences, which I've shown to you before. This year, more than 500 people have applied for 24 spots. And throughout these youth conferences, um, the 24 young people, in a similar manner that we are doing right now, based on design, design thinking and workshops, um, produce different policy proposals, which are then gathered in an annual conference report. And last year, together with other US fellows, I've been creating the Handbook for Innovative Democracy, which kind of gathers all the proposals from the last four years in a very tangible handbook for decision makers to use easily. And after that, we convene with other stakeholders. First of all, we talk to other um, academics who produce an academic research overview of certain topics on our policy proposals in order to identify the gaps and how we can improve the quality of these proposals. And then we come to the citizen-centric approach. As I told you, this year, 500, youth fellow, uh, 500 people applied for our youth conferences. There are only 24 spots. But we are saying the other 400 or 500 people, they shouldn't be uh, just getting it at time. They are included into our IYTT youth panel, meaning that we present our proposals to them in order to gather um, feedback from their side to include uh, to include it in the improvement of the quality of our policy proposals. And furthermore, since we don't just want to have youth feedback on our policy proposals, we also convene citizen panels with a diverse membership representing a society at large who give us further feedback 
to make our policy proposals citizen centered as well. And then we use them to uh, advocate to advocate for our ideas and proposals towards uh, leaders, globally speaking. And for example, right now we are um, competing with the city of Gothenburg to implement one of our proposals on education throughout the whole city. So as I've mentioned, throughout our work cycle, we have different outputs. One of them is the handbook for competitive democracy, which I so it's basically a little book, as I mentioned, that kind of unites all the policy proposals that we've had so far, around two, under governance, education, and equity issues. And when you open it, you can have a look at it later. We have different sections, and each of the policy proposals uh, is divided, first of all, with a title, a short description, and then linked to the SDGs, but also to resource areas, because if you are a government official who has to make a decision, some governments may be uh, rich in financial resources, others in human resources, and so on. Um, some of these proposals take more time, some less. So this is basically to make it kind of an easy to use menu for um, decision makers in order to implement some of our proposals. Other outputs that we have are um, working papers, the policy briefs, and data. And the citizen centric data, I think it's the most important aspect for today. First of all, we get gather data through the IRSG Youth Panel that I've just explained to you before. And secondly, we gather citizen centric data through what we call the Open Share Democracy Talks. So we have youth fellows. We invite uh, all over the, all of the world on uh, all continents. And we get to the streets to talk to people about their ideas, perceptions, and demands on democracy. And that's what we've been doing every year and this year on, yeah all continents basically. And these are some of the questions we ask. These questions may sound basic and they're intentionally that basic because we don't want to put the questions already in a frame that kind of um, already determines in which direction the answers are going. We want people to openly speak about their ideas and perceptions on democracy. And because I've been invited to speak at this conference, we also ask them about their opinions on artificial intelligence. And these are some of the outcomes, maybe Unsurprising for now if you read them individually. So most people obviously think that AI is influencing democracy in some way, but it's very uncertain how it's actually going to happen because most of the people are, as you may think, um, these are some of the specific perceptions. Um, a lot of privacy issues, people are scared. Um, there's, there's scared of surveillance. Um, it's a powerful tool, but first and foremost, it's also an unknown tool. A lot of citizens don't really know what is AI, how can it be used, and uh, how is it going to be governed, um, what's the relation, for example, to human rights. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty around these issues. And uh, yeah, that's why we've sort of tried to analyze all the data that we've gathered from um, yeah, more than 20 or 30 places worldwide. Uh, so far, we've done this manually, which is obviously uh, quite, quite a task to do. And these are some of the, the outcomes. So basically, adding the AI questions to democracy, um, we kind of found that citizens are concerned about similar sets of issues and themes when we talk about democracy and when we talk about AI. And this may seem basic, but I think it's still a very interesting, um, interesting finding because basically what it says is that we need to demystify AI. AI is not, on one hand, it's something for the future, and it's maybe something that's relatively unknown to us and to citizens. At the same time, a lot of these key issues, for example, governments. Is very key to democratic societies, but also to AI. AI, who's developing these systems? How are they being governed? And these kind of questions are very central to um, yeah, citizens at large. Secondly, participation and election. Are there going to be um, yeah, digital elections in the future? How is participation going to be influenced? And also, in, uh, in light of the upcoming um, US elections, I'm not sure if they have next year again, um, there are a lot of demands and questions about. How is AI going to be regulated in this kind of uh, in this kind of context to still make it um, yeah inclusive for citizens? And obviously, knowledge and information. AI is transforming the way knowledge is produced, but also the way knowledge is uh, dispersed around society, which uh, yeah can obviously have a lot of positive impacts, but also may have uh, negative impacts, especially coming to the next point on education. I think at least that's something we we've talked about in our. Um, in our working group on the impact of AI. AI will have a tremendous impact on education. Um, on the one hand, 
citizens are unknown, so there's a big need to educate people. On the other hand, AI will also transform educational systems, for example, from a knowledge base towards a skills based um, educational system. And the last point, which is uh, key for me and for this presentation today, is inclusion. Um, a lot of AI systems, other technologies may have biases within them. And therefore, it's increasingly important to actually include uh, the voices of citizens, to include citizens uh, in the development on, on, uh, on AI, or at least data that reflects their views uh, into the development of AI. And therefore, um, yeah, the conclusion is sort of that AI is not an alien, mission, uh, an alien issue, but it matters to citizens and it should matter to democracies and to governments, which uh, many of you are representing at the moment. And there's a dire need to, for informed adaptation to educate citizens in order to make the global AI transition an inclusive one. And this is why we call as the IYTT to kind of shift the focus to think not just about AI as artificial and inclusive and, and intelligent, but to think about AI, artificial and inclusive intelligence. Because we believe that artificial intelligence can only be as inclusive, uh, as intelligent as it, as it is inclusive. And therefore, we have a call for um, collaboration. First of all, we aim to kind of discourage uh, the open share democracy talks that we are doing right now um, to allow more youth globally to raise the voices of uh, citizens on democracy and, and AI issues. And therefore, we have a proposal to develop a digital platform that kind of helps to um, disperse what we're doing right now in order to spread the voices of people globally. And uh, therefore, we say that uh, our unique selling point was the citizen centric data that we gather. And of course, uh, everybody could take to the streets, but we are doing it as young people. People trust us. We get discussions with them on a basis that online surveys can and get. And we go to places that other people don't go. One of our youth fellows has done an open set box talks with soldiers in Ukraine during the war, for example, which is quite difficult to gather through digital means. And therefore, what are the steps forward of the editability? On the one hand, by collaborating, we could use AI systems in order to analyze our data better, because right now I did it manually, which was uh, quite a time consuming process, obviously. And um, so to use AI systems, we can do it faster, uh, faster and more efficiently. And on the other hand, we can also have the outcomes quicker. Because it would be quite interesting to have all these data analyzed within uh, only a few, few seconds or minutes in order to kind of have the status quo update of what citizens actually think about democratic and AI issues in the moment. On the other hand, we can also use the data to feed it into AI systems in order to make them more citizen centric. And uh, our main aim is, as I described to you in the beginning, the current state of democracy is in decline. So we can use the AI condition by making it citizen centric in order to um, revive and promote democracy again. And therefore, coming back to my main point, bringing together AI and uh, the idea of the Agora, the rule of the people, basically. It's our call that uh, right now we are in a very critical moment in time. We are at the beginning of the AI transition, the AI revolution. And the decisions that we are making today, that we are making here, determine how AI will affect citizens in the future. And therefore, again, I call upon all of us also throughout this workshop and in order to uh, create a human-centric approach to artificial intelligence, to shift our thinking away from purely AI to AI, to artificial and inclusive intelligence. Thank you. And I think now we have some uh, time for some questions if everybody, anybody has questions. Otherwise, about anything that I said, uh, I'll be here tomorrow as well for the next days in uh, Montreal. So please come and approach me if you have any, any questions or if you want to discuss any of these issues or if you have ideas on how we can collaborate. Any questions? Oh, Alex. <clears throat> I'm just curious to get a perspective. A lot of the words that were there were negative. I'm thinking how within the work, like the, the youth groups that you're working with, are they thinking about the future of jobs and how AI is impacting their ability to be able to have a flourishing career? And, um, I'm just curious to get like that perspective.
from what you've been gathering. Yeah, maybe I can elaborate your question, otherwise I can ask it again. The question was <laughs> related to the future of work and how uh, me working in the youth here, what are kind of my perceptions and perceptions of the other young people around me. I'd say, first of all, when I talk to young people, I think the young people are, the mostly they tend to focus more on the positive sides of artificial intelligence. And I think that also makes sense. Uh, the younger people are, the more they use growing up in these kind of technolo uh, technological times, and they see a lot of advantages. Um, where you see more the negative perception uh, is, yeah, more towards the older, older groups of people. And I think we talked about it in our workshop as well. On the one hand, there's a need for more expertise on AI, so to actually educate people on AI. On the other hand, there's also the need for people who are working right now, not in the sphere of AI, and whose jobs may be lost in the future, who need to be re-educated. And I think when you have this kind of people, they are the ones who predominantly answer negatively. When you have young people, of course, I mean, people like myself who did not study, uh, who studied social sciences, so quite a quite different sphere. Um, I mean, I'm personally not worried about not getting a job, but generally speaking, it's uh, the audience concerns. But I think among young people, there's more, uh, not this problem as focus, but more uh, solution focus. So it's going to happen anyway. Uh, AI is going to come anyway. Jobs are going to change anyway. And in my understanding, maybe that's also different from my parents, for example, uh, or my grandparents' generation. We used to work in the same job for all the life. Obviously, when they have to be re-educated to new job, it's a whole different question. And for me, who kind of says on the onset, I don't want to work in the same job for five years, probably, because after that, I probably want to do something different. So um, I hope that answers the question. Anyone else? I see you're, you're, you're sticking around, so you'll be the yeah. right. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Right time is over. <laughs> I am inviting you all to go back to the same uh, workshop as you were in this morning, and then uh, we can start extracting your range. So uh, have a nice afternoon. Uh, I'll be around if there's anything. Thanks. Great question. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. That was the end. I'm going to build a AI.